Hi guys, so today what we're going to be looking at is kind of some of the weirdos when it comes to graphing. And like before, like the weirdos are great. And that's pretty much true to life. So let's check out what these odd ones are. And I think that you're going to enjoy them because they're a little bit easier than the normal graphing. First off, these weirdos pop, weirdos pop up when we're dealing with what we call a constant function. And a constant function is when you have a variable equal to a single number, like y equals 5 or x equals 2. Now notice how before when we were doing equations that were not constant functions, um, we had equations like y is equal to 2x plus 9. And see how this is not a constant function because there's both an x and a y in it. So in order for it to be a constant function, you need one variable equal to one number. That's all it takes. And these are always going to form specific patterns on a graph. So when we were dealing with things like 2x plus 9, we had graphs that looked something like this. They always came across at these diagonals. And I mean, not this one here, 2x plus 9, but other ones might have come down at angles like this, so they're jumping down the graph, or come across at this little low angle, something like that. Well, when you have a constant function, it's not going to be tilted. In fact, a constant function will always make either a horizontal line or a vertical line. And we can see which one of these will be which just by looking at examples. So let's find the equation of the following graphs. And I'm going to first show you guys how to do this using a t-chart. So when you are looking at this first problem, you can find the general pattern just by finding a few of the solutions or a few of the points on the graph. So if I'm looking at this point, I see I've gone 0 over and 2 down. That means x is 0 and y is negative 2 because that's that point. And I could go over to my next point and I can see that x is 1 and y is still negative 2. It hasn't gone up or down at all. It's just kind of staying steady. I could even go way over here instead of going to number 3. And I could have said, well, what about when x is negative 2? Well, when x is negative 2, y is all the way down at negative 2 still, right? This hasn't changed. That's still the point, negative 2, negative 2. So notice the pattern here. If you had to summarize the pattern, you'd probably tell me that, well, all that's happening is y is negative 2. And that's actually a formula. y is, or y equals, negative 2. Now it doesn't matter where x is, because regardless of what x is, y will always be negative 2. So we don't need an x in this equation because it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the graph. Same thing with this next one. This one's going to have the same sort of pattern that we can find. And in order to do this, again, you guys can look at the pattern here, x and y. Let's find a few points on this line that's right here. It doesn't show up very nice compared to the other one, so I'm just going to darken it. Well, when x is 0, or let's just check out this point. When x is 0, then y here is 3. And if I pick another point on the line, that's the point 4, 3. And if I pick another point on the line, I've got the point 2, 3, because I'm 2 over and 3 up. So if I'm graphing these points, I make this straight line, right? And if I made a t-chart describing those, when x is 0, y is 3. It's my first point. I've got the point 2, 3. I've got the point 4, 3. And I could have picked a bunch of different ones, and maybe you did too when you were looking at it. But notice the pattern here. No matter what, y equals 3. So we have the graph y equals a positive 3. Now, you might notice then that we have a pattern. When we have these horizontal lines, all that we have is y equal to a number. So why not put under horizontal lines y equals, well, any number? In fact, the number that it's going to equal is the number that it hits when it goes through the axis, the y-axis. So you can think about that 
as you look at other horizontal lines. So let's just kind of skip around. Now this is a vertical line and maybe it has something to do with why, maybe it doesn't, but I know that when it's a horizontal line, I should be able to just say y equals. Now, y equals what? Well, see how it goes through at two. That means that y is always equal to two. And you can verify this, right? You can double check that you did this right simply by looking at a few of the points. This is the point zero two, this is the point three two, this right here is the point negative three two. So see how y in each of these instances is two. So I know that my equation was right because it's true. Y is always two. And with this one, what will that have to be? Well, looking at what we know, it's a horizontal line, so we know it's going to be y equals. There won't be an x in it because it's not tilted at all. Remember, if it's tilted, we're going to have that x. But here, where does it go through the y-axis? Well, it goes through the y-axis at 7.5. So that means y equals 7.5. And again, you can verify that. What about our other ones here, though? We also have a bunch of ones that are vertical. Now you might already guess what this is going to look like, but let's start with that t-chart just to see. I'm going to find a few points on here. So see how this point right here is the point 3, negative 2? Well, our next point is the point 3, because I'm 3 over for the x, and I'm down 1, so that's negative 1. This point is 3 over for x, and it's nowhere for y, so that's 0. And I could keep going. Let's just jump up to this top one. We are 3 over for x, and we are 2 up for y. Now, if you drop this into a t-chart, and I'm just going to copy it on over my x and y, what is the pattern here? Well, the pattern is that x is always equal to 3. So again, because it doesn't really matter what y is, we know no matter what, x is equal to 3. I don't actually need y in my equation. I can just say x equals 3. And notice how that vertical line then is going to be x equals a number. And you're going to see that this vertical line, it's going, it's going to equal the number that it hits when the line goes through the x-axis. Now, a lot of times people get these two things confused, the horizontal and the vertical, and they say, when am I using the x and when am I using the y? Well, you can always figure it out with the t-chart, right? But if you don't want to write a t-chart every time, you can think it's going to be x equals when it goes through the x-axis vertically. It will be y equals when it goes through the y-axis horizontally. So let's just get our last one down in here. And with this one, I can see it's a vertical line, so even without anything else, I can just write x equals, because again, those horizontal and vertical lines are constant functions. They're special. And here, what does x equal? Well, you can see it goes through the x-axis at negative 4. Therefore, my formula will be x equals negative 4. And you can verify that with a t-chart just by checking out a few of those points. Now, we can use this concept when we are graphing, and we can graph each of the following lines, just remembering that when we have y equals, it's going to be a horizontal line. So both of these two will have to be horizontal. In fact, so will the y equals one half. All three of these will. And it's going to be horizontal going through the axis at that point. So for instance, y equals three. Well, it's going to go through the y-axis at 3. So I'm going to find y is 3, and I'm going to draw that horizontal line through it. And of course, I'm going to label my line, because that's the responsible thing to do. Now, when I get y equals negative 2, I have to ask myself, OK, remember x x equals is going to be vertical because it goes through the x-axis. y equals is going to be horizontal because it goes through the y-axis. So that means I'm going to drop down to y is equal to negative 2. So remember, it goes through at the value there of negative 2. So I can draw in this line and, of course, label it. 
Last but not least, I have y is equal to 1 half. So it's going to be horizontal, right? It goes through the y-axis. And I know this because it has no axes. It's just a constant function. And it's going to go through at 1 half. So 1 half here on the y-axis is about at that part. And I can draw that horizontal line through it. And I get y equals 1 half. Now, if you are like me, you definitely want to see that you did this right. Don't be afraid to also figure this out with a t-chart. So if you have y equals 3 and you're like, I do not remember if that's horizontal or vertical, make yourself a t-chart. And tell yourself, what do I know? Well, I know that I, y is equal to 3. When is y equal to 3? It's always equal to 3. So it doesn't matter what I put down for x. No matter what, y equals 3. So I could always graph the points that I wrote. Mind you, I did make one ridiculously huge one, but I could drop in another normal one, like 2, 3. I could graph those points, 0, 3, 1, 3, now 2, 3, and I could put the line through it, and I'd have y equals 3. Let's also then do some graphing with some x equals. All right, so first thing I think is, well, do I have more than one variable? No, I don't. And since I only have the one variable x, it means that I have a constant function. It's going to be vor vertical or horizontal. Now, since it's x, that means it's going to go through my x-axis. And that makes it a vertical line, because the only other way you can go through the x-axis is if it's literally on the x-axis, which is a whole different thing. But let's look at this. x equals 4. That means it's going to go through at x equals 4. So I can make my line vertical, and of course, label it. Now we can do the same thing with x equals negative 1. Again, remind yourself, we're going vertical line through the x-axis at negative 1. So I'm going through the x-axis at negative 1, and I'm going to label my line. Last but not least, I have y equals negative 3. Oh, careful. This is not an x. And remember, if we have y equals negative 3, we're looking at something with only one variable, so it's going to be horizontal or vertical, and it's y, so it goes through the y-axis at negative 3. So if this is 0, I go down 3 for negative 3 for the y-axis, and it makes this lovely horizontal line right across the page at y equals negative 3. So that would be my final answer for those three graphs. Don't forget that you can always make a t-chart. So if a question asks you to do that, make a t-chart for x equals 2, then graph the equation. Don't forget that just be like before, you can still line up x and y. The difference is, before, when we picked values, we could pick all kinds of values, and we would then put it into a formula to figure out y. But I don't have a y here. The only thing I know is that x is equal to 2. So what could y be? Well, there's tons of possibilities. y could be 1, y could be 0, y could be 37.5. It doesn't really matter. No matter what, x will be 2. So you can graph those points to find your line. You're going to need to put an axis on a graph like this, and you're going to have to watch your scale. Now for this one, I'm going to switch this final point because I really don't want to go to 37.5. Let's go ahead and just do y is equal to 5. So here I'm going to go up by 1s. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to do the same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm just giving myself a scale to work with. And here I'm going to go 2 over. 1 up. For the next one, I'm going to go 2 over 0 up, because it's 2, 0, right? And y is always how far up. And for our third one, I want 2 over 5 up. Now notice they're all stacked, which they should be, because when we have x equals 2, what we're really saying is that we have x, a line going through the x-axis, at 2. That is it for today. Check out Classroom for your assignment, and then once you guys turn that in, you are done for the, well, I guess technically year as we wrap up 2020. I hope you guys enjoy your Christmas break. Have a Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year.